beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed we are still going to pray tonight and I trust that God will help us. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I begin my reading from verse 12. Let me start um, to just encourage our hearts. First John chapter 2. Verse 12, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 13, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, now listen, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. 14. I have written to you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Grant us understanding even by the Spirit. Build our hearts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. When scripture is talking to the young, it talks about two advantages that they have. Number one is that they are strong. Number two is that the word of God abiding in them has given them the ability to overcome a personality that the Bible calls the wicked one. Please listen. When he writes to the fathers, he describes that your advantage is your knowledge. There is something you have known about God from the beginning. When he writes to the young men, he says your advantage as young people is that you have strength and then that his word abides in you and on account of that abiding word that you have the power to overcome the wicked it is very important when the bible is is teaching us it's important that we focus on the context of what it is saying knowledge for the fathers strength and the grace to fight is the advantage of young people are we together now first john chapter 5 verse 4 apostle john is still teaching and he's teaching the believer that the life of a believer is not only a life of victory but a life of warfare verse 4 
for whatsoever, not whosoever, is born of God, overcome it. He's still talking of overcoming. Listen, please. Young men, strength and the grace to fight. And he's saying whatsoever is born of God overcomes this system. And this is the victory that overcomes. There is victory that does not overcome. There is victory that calls for celebration. But here he's talking about a kind of victory that demonstrates that you are victorious by the experience of your overcoming this system. And he says, even our faith. Listen very carefully. He didn't say this faith produces that victory. He says the faith is the victory. Are we together now? You have to understand this. This is, for many years, I thought he's just talking of faith. You will learn something powerful tonight. That there is something called the faith that overcomes. That if a believer possesses that, the proof is that you will be able to rise above this system. And the Bible calls that faith. It does not say the faith produces victory. Uh -uh. That faith is victory itself. Are we together? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. It starts by saying above all, above every spiritual equipping you have been given. Now remember that in the book of Ephesians, he's teaching the believer how to sit, a revelation of your position in Christ. Then he teaches how to walk, your walk of faith. Now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy. And he's saying that above all, that you can take a shield, a shield, I did a little of that during the prayer and fasting. I don't know if it was this year or last year. A shield of faith. And then it says, wherewith, with that shield, you shall have an ability. You don't have that ability until that shield is there. That when the shield comes, you will be able to quench how many? All the fiery darts of the wicked. The same wicked one John is talking about. So we know that when it has to do with warfare, Satan is revealed as a wicked man. Wickedness, that the whole world lied in wickedness. That is the character. Please listen. And then the Bible says that you can hold the shield of faith. And that with that faith you can quench all, not some, the fiery darts. I write to you young men. Don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong. I write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome. Are we together now? First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door he's teaching the church in Corinth and an effectual is opened unto me so he's talking about open doors are we together now dimensions access a great door an effectual is opened unto me he said but there are many adversaries a door of opportunity a door of growth, a door of grace. But he's saying, he's teaching us something here. That the moment you see doors opening, don't celebrate. Prepare to fight. That a great door is open unto me. But that the moment a door begins to be opened, he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open. The moment you see doors opening, know that there are many adversaries. And so young men, get set when you see doors open, take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one. Are you, are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. That for every door that is opened and effectual, 
that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door and that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith please understand I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life a great door and an effectual is open but many are the adversaries but the Bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts now listen it matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom it matters listen please that we understand how we transit in the kingdom it matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints because for many believers we are aware of promises but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life the power the grace of the kingdom and so while we are inspired by an expected end many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan are you getting what I'm saying now so it is true that we fix our eyes on the end but we are never really taught to understand the many things the vicissitudes that we will face on the way and lack of listen lack of that understanding and do many things to our experience including not allowing us to arrive at the end spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church in fact it's not just the ability to read your Bible to be equipped remember when he talks about fathers their advantage is knowledge you are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge so when he talks about fathers he says you have knowledge there is something that you know when he talks about young men he says young men you are about to know something you do not yet know it but in your fight what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight so that when you become fathers you will also be able to guide the young are you getting what I'm saying now fathers you have this knowledge because you fought and that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you young men you are your advantage is that you are emotion there is strength but there are many things you are going to know and then he says guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what I'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy please hear me this life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith now I believe in the grace message don't get me wrong I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom but there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight that destiny is a threat to Satan the very the very picture of destiny your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent and so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny they become the center of his interest now many believers don't know this we have all kinds of wise sayings don't trouble me I don't trouble you and all of that and we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give Satan the only way Satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble you are joking go and read your Bible well 
the, there is something the moment you carry that thing called Satan till you leave the earth please understand what I'm teaching you when there is prophecy upon your head when there is grace upon your life when there is a word upon your mouth when there is an interest upon your life Satan is interested in you and let me tell you there is one thing about Satan he has an undying interest he wants everything God wants and if that thing is you then listen to this message Koinonia is quiet <laughs> The proposition that many believers have that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you that there is faith that overcomes. Follow me as I teach. I have discovered that Satan's assignment, listen carefully, Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith. I used to think Satan was after our faith. I found out that's wrong. Satan is not after your faith. Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. You see that? So what you really attack is not their obedience what you attack is the information if i tell pastor alpha come pastor femi come and they hear another voice that says go now that is an attack on information because in either ways it is going to necessitate action please listen to what i'm teaching you many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information. I'm about to die. I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information. And came back to life wine was finished one information was introduced and the next thing water was turned to wine listen to me this is a kingdom 
where we reign. And this is a kingdom where Satan operates. And this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally. Whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. Our fight, therefore, in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer, listen to me, will be the warfare of words, the warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor to become an engineer to become whatever it is information one information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering he receives that information and that information turns his life around. Have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much she places value on information. When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man theologically speaking of, you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, what did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2. God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, uh -huh, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that, you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say, man, leave the garden. Satan does not say, man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. 
they still need faith to believe this are you getting what i'm saying now and the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon and he shifted it and supplied another information and they absorbed that information verse 5 it says for God knows for God knows I write to you fathers any father including God that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge for God knows that the day you eat thereof your eyes will be opened and then you shall be as gods knowing good and evil verse 6 now he said when the woman saw notice what the information started doing the information was like a drug we are not aware that he touched her he just supplied an information the first thing the information changed was perception the eyes the eyes started coming under the influence of that information and then number two an appetite started coming out that was not there now look at how words are powerful you will now know why god is called the word of god the compendium of the thoughts of god this is how satan sent man out of eden is it not amazing that he never used a sword my brothers and my sisters the greatest battles are not fought with knives the greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns the greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people and the bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food the bible says she partook of it ate that information compelled action he never touched her but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action and then the bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat next verse and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sued fig trees the long and short is he banished them out of the garden this is the first official record in the bible of man becoming a victim of satan this is the first official record of the warfare between man and satan and satan won so it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used and he used the weapon of words weapons of information are we together now yes there is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results that information comes i can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of god will multiply you were moving in innocence but an information came i will tell you something about informations i just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information satan wants your mind because your your destiny is not just god dependent it's also dependent on the information that runs you your faith cannot be based on nothing and whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence of your results that's what satan wants please listen to me the information upon which your faith is built that is his concern satan is not interested in your faith as it were he's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted that's it so if i tell tosin i say tosin go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman now faith can come because i have released a word is that true yes that word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act so when you see him move you call it faith but faith would never have been there except that an information came now assuming he's on his way going and i now stop him and give him another word i say don't worry go back what did i do i turned his whole life around using information 
listen to what I teach you there is power in this will you open up the gate open up the door will you open up the gate show you why information is power both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm I want to show you why words are so powerful God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were he names himself after information if God names himself after information that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out. Something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life. Something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again. I can stop whatever you are doing now, not by fighting you. I only need to introduce something to you. I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information. And I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information. Google, Facebook, they are a threat today to national security and the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with our information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the words just stop at my ear, and the Spirit continued. The spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said. Now listen please. That he wanted me to move from where I was to another place. And he simply sent a word. And when that word got to the gate of my ears, it was not, it, it had finished his work like a tray. Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound. It was spirit. And that when it entered me, 
like a drug reacting to a patient. Have you swallowed a drug before? And then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you. You start to feel drowsy and you are wondering. Remember, you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not. It entered you and started reconfiguring you. I know your action by what you have received. I look at your destiny and I can, I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information. What did God tell you? Your victory cannot be automatic. So if what did God tell you in your conversation with him? Because in Genesis, when you read Genesis chapter 2, it says, now the Lord came. The Hebrew word is the talking spirit. The spirit that speaks. The spirit that lives by speaking. The spirit that changes a man's life by speaking. Now listen. So for every word that is spoken, there is a spirit. The word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit. It means there is an energizing. Words and information carry energy. They create a climate that compel action. This is where religion and science both agree. That words are powerful. They are shapers of perception. They are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply there is a medical condition called brain damage there is also another medical condition called loss of memory. It happens a lot with old people. It's a state where because of whatever biological challenges, you no longer have the retention power. You can forget your wife, your husband. And medical people agree that it's a dangerous state for a man to be in. There are people, watch this. Who all of a sudden, especially the elderly, after 60, 70 years of living on earth, it could even be a pilot, it could even be a professor, just two months, something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk. His bones were not affected. The information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move. And you ask him and say, what is your name, sir? And he talks like a toddler. The absence of information turn a man to a baby. The technology of words. Words carry presence. Information carries energy. Whether they are spiritual information, whether they are psychological information, whether they are they are um, intellectual information that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment ladies and gentlemen now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation I show you the reason why men never stay until they win I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life do you know why because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated is one of the worst discoveries it is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened there are still a few nations today now I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking political but there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm from some level of sanity a bit and the reason why those nations have is the dictators the leaders there worked with the government to stop 
information dissemination. Is that true? When you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler, who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance, there were chants and cliches that they continued to put. It was on radio, it was everywhere. And all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior. And it worked. He built an army not by recruiting men, information. Terrorist groups today continue to recruit people not necessarily by force they propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say i want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it hmm. whoever told you information is cheap whoever told you information is simple where God names himself the word of God, the information of God. So every time words come to you, here's the technology. When a word is spoken or you come in contact with words or information, the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated. Imaginations cannot be activated until there are words. This is why words are dangerous. Words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations. Everybody look up. Imagine a yellow orange yellow orange big yellow orange now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife are you seeing how whether you like it or not you are thinking what i'm saying you are not just hearing it i'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information now imagine a mother carrying a little baby imagine the baby trying to cry are you seeing how helpless your mind is provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you but once it is there it has an ability that not even you can control again once it enters it's like a drug it starts to become an artist it paints images about God about life about Satan a little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came he heard the father or the mother say Kai, this life self this life self and an image began to be created and that image listen it is dangerous because the moment an image is built your emotions are connected to the image the moment your emotions are connected to images creation begins immediately this is how things manifest. Please, I want you to listen. You would thank me for what you are learning today. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it knows what it's saying. That means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it, that information is not just words. That information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words. They are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear 
the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information. Who has believed our reports? To that man, the arm of the Lord has been made revealed. Words carry spirits. Words carry energy. And this is not some science nonsense. I am telling you, you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance. He said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. That means show a confused man scattered in destiny. Just introduce the word of God to that person. And that's it. Your life will begin to reflect the information that you have. I'm saying this because, listen to me, our generation is very careless over our minds. Our generation is very careless over the power of words. In ministry, in life, people don't seem to have regard for words. Words are powerful. Words produce effects. Words can make. Words can destroy. Words can heal. Words can cause pain. Words are powerful. And if you understand this, words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations. When Satan wants a cause to remain in your family, he does not say cause remain. He uses words, the word of a priest, the word of an elder, words that have come from father to grandfather. Now you believe those words and when you believe those words, they create images. You are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe. That is the strength of the altar. The altar sits on your emotional connection to those words. The day you stop believing those words, you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing. That's why when the Holy Ghost comes, he now tells you, are you not aware that there is another information? Esther, listen, her man came and requested the king to approve an information. And an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting. They were going about every day. They did not know that they had finished killing them by information. Even when her man died, they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man. The real enemy was the information. Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem information and so Esther went to the king and said do you know what you have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people it was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory information words that's what they call April Fool many of you do it People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you. You stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery then he comes he will create a system around it sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent this is the victory that overcomes what victory 
the labor in the spirit to protect the information. It is real warfare and it produces real victory. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I, I, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? Notice he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed. As soon as he saw it, he just started becoming glad. Watch this. A student stands in front of the board. He's coming with his friend to check his result. Glory be to God. I'm happy. We'll all be graduates. And he stands in front of the board. And in two minutes, he sees an information. Three carryovers. And that person is there. And for the next one week, he cannot become himself again because an information came. Imagine that while he's standing there, somebody just comes and says, sorry, it's a mistake. It was not your number. Watch, immediately he will change back. Now watch this. Look at how you are moving at the frequency of information. Like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text, congratulations. Say for what? Say you got admission. Say no, you are checking your first name, check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name. Immediately you start to dance. The information did not tell you to dance. It created an energy that supplied action. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act in honor of the persuasions. You receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you become a master at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. 
Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many adversaries. And guess how the adversaries act? They operate through words. Through words. You will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there. You will be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company. The moment you hear it, it begins to affect you. A believer has the responsibility, please hear me, in honor of your destiny, in honor of the purposes of God, you have a responsibility under God to set a guard, not just over your mouth, but over your mind, to control the information. Unfortunately, our world today is full of all kinds of information. People have entered divination not knowing, because in a bid to search for truth, they stumble across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer, I'm not saying doctors are wrong. It is at stage four. And usually, statistics, we've built a statistics around this information. That at this stage of cancer, you have between six months to one year to live. Any other encouragement you give that man is a waste of time. The information has entered. Let me tell you what will begin to happen. My child is only nine years. What am I going to do with my nine-year-old child? And then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes. I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months. Fear is coming. The next thing, the spirit of suicide comes. What good is living? While all of this is happening, watch this. Those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful. As though they veto you and walk, they depend on your partnership, your reception of words. Now watch this. He said, young men, the word of God abides in you. That means when that kind of report comes, there should be, if you are a believer, there should be war within your spirit. If there is no war, it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer. Because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information. And listen, when the word went to hell, there was war in hell. Are we together now? Satan mimicking, attempting to be the light bearer. The word, and then the word himself, the logos of God, there was war in hell. And he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the gotten. The war happened in the realm of the spirit, but the result was seen in the physical realm. The war always happens in the realm of the spirit. The death happens in the realm of the spirit. The defeat happens in the realm of the spirit. And all we see is the physical manifestation. Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth. And then they came out and said, wow, now we fall. No, 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 no. The battle was won there. The keys were collected. And he came out victorious and said, all hail, all power. Immediately he resurrected. He spoke straight up. There is something you need. Disciples come together. In three days, you had something that changed your mind. Little children, come. Feed my lamb. Tarry in Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost is coming. Information. That's what he left them with. When the angels came, they said, why look up, you know, to the sky? This same Jesus you have seen, he will return. That became the basis of salvation, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. Paul created a theology out of that information. That is where we stand today. He calls it the power of God unto salvation. 
please listen to what I tell you. Our children watch cartoons and people get initiated. Why? Because of information. Notice that when these children hear, they start chanting what they are saying, even if it's part of what they are saying, whether or not they understand it, and they become emotionally connected to it, and it begins to affect them. I write to you, young men, because you are strong. Fathers, you know this. You are equipped in knowledge. But I write to you, young men, because you are strong. I write to you, young men, because the word of God is abiding in you. And because of that abiding word, Satan is going to come. And when he comes, fight. What fight? The fight of allowing the word of God gain superiority. He said, let God be true and let every man be a liar. This is the warfare of the believer. I got a report from home in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God well up within me. I decree and declare there is no death in my family. There is no going down. There is only rising up. The hand of God is upon me. You are fighting the warfare. You are using that faith that the Bible calls is the victory. I give you a guarantee. There is one thing Satan does not have. An indefinite power to survive. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. Satan can be weary. But there are many weak believers. We sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces. We sit down and allow the devil to take advantage. Do you know there are people right now who are like, if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit, imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words. You will fail. You will die. Your life will not rise. You are good for nothing. And you sit down and it leads to depression. The birth of anything valuable is painful. It will require you knowing how to fight Satan. I'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth. Internet. People go online and type something. Go online and just put something. Bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever. Oh, the job you did. With that class, there is a statistics like this, that out of the so, so, so million of graduates, only three in 10 years. See, let me tell you the truth. And I submit to you, many information on this earth are useless. As far as your life is concerned, as far as your victory is concerned, you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life. If you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information, you will lose the anointing, you will lose relevance, you will lose power. Your strength is in your protecting that information. You must guard yourself. Is God speaking to us? This gentleman sings. I can tell him one word. Your song is beautiful. It will take you around the earth. He can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager. And the manager looks at him and says, what tribe are you? You are not this tribe. Mr. Man, I don't want to lie to you. I'm sorry. Another information creates presence. Listen, we are going to pray tonight. And many of you do not know that you are in the, you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words. And because you are connected to these various things, they make good things look evil. It is this energy that will make good people look like devils. Even if somebody looks at you and says, nice hair, you say, nice hair for what? You are reacting to an energy. There are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life. So it corrupts your perception. When God says, I want to lift you, like Mephibosheth, you say, am I a dog? God, go and lift others. 
Tonight we have come to tear these things. It's why people don't prosper. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what kind of business you do. The real business is the business of information. It's the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere. They will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you. There was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do, you will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this. Human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. You must be careful what you say to others. You must be careful what you hear from yourself. You must be careful what you hear about others. It is not the information, it is the effect on your life, on your destiny. It is the effect. Um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching uh, a, a, an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word not said correctly can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. 
second Kings chapter 7 hallelujah please look up watch this then Elisha said this is the prophet hear ye the word he, he wants to change farming now I want to show you the technology until now Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children do you think those women started eating their children like that somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food tomorrow about this time information everybody say words shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria next verse verse 2 and then this other lord said a lot of things simply because he did not fight the prophet he fought the information that came from god and there was a consequence he said behold thou shalt see it with your eyes but thou shalt not eat thereof next verse now watch how god brings his word to pass look up please we're about to pray there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate and they said the spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another are you seeing how this thing works they were not talking to themselves before but an anointing came as soon as that anointing came information started coming why they said to one another why sit we here till we die was that the first time they were sitting there they had been there but see every word is sponsored by spirits listen to what i tell you when they were prophesying I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it they did not hear the prophecy but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men and they were sitting they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them the next thing the urge to talk and they said why should we sit here and die and as soon as they started contemplating go back go to verse 4 if we say we will enter the city then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear It says, now, therefore, come. They are talking to one another. Let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If we save us alive, we shall die. If they kill us, we shall but die. Look at this. These are people sitting at the gate, running away from hunger. And in minutes, courage comes upon them. And they make up their mind, let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy. If we die information now watch this verse 5 and they rose up what time at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria behold there was no man there what happened next verse hallelujah Mako Sibra Katushiata for the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise he did something to their perception they got an information I'm showing you how they ran away they got an information and then even a great noise and they said the same way the lepers said to one another this guy said to one another lo the king of Israel had hired against us are you seeing what perception does it gives you ideas that are not there they, there was no business the kings themselves were afraid but here is an information making a weak man look strong the king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites the Egyptians and so on and so forth to come upon us wherefore they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents their horses their asses 
abandoned the camp as it was and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it. And came again and entered into another tent and carried all of this. Verse 9, to tell you it was the Spirit of God. They now said, the same Spirit now made them to pass another information. It would have stopped at them stealing to run away. But the goal would not be achieved. The goal was the salvation of Samaria, not the healing of four lepers. So the Spirit now came and still made them to say to one another again, we do not well. Same spirit. Can you imagine that? One moment they are stealing and running away unhappy. Next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well. This is the day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning, what if some mischief come upon us? Now therefore come, let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report. That king, we came and found food here. Four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words. I'm showing you the technology. If one of those lepers, just one, said I'm not going, the rest would have been discouraged. It was the spirit of God that made all of them to unanimously agree. Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. There is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally. We are products of the information that we have heard. There is something Koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of God rests. There is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us. Tonight in prayer is a warfare of words. To stand to say, Lord, a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment, but the warfare. My children are depending on the quality. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says, I think it's Mark 4 or so. Did I write it here? Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. Let me show you God's standard. It says, take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. That means hearing is also sowing. When you hear, it's like a farmer putting seeds. And he said that if you hear, you are drawing more of that. That means you keep attracting more things to your life. Are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people? Because their minds continue to create the climate for it. This is where it comes from. It shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. More of what you hear. More of what you hear. If you hear the word of God, you hear things that build you, more of it will come. You hear about the anointing, it will bring the anointing, more of it will come. You hear about, that's why we must be careful. Now, I minister deliverance and all of that, but I have a little problem with talking about Satan and talking about demons every day and forever. It is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass, you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again. When Isaiah, the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah told us what he saw. He said, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. Son of man, what seest thou? You must choose what you hear. Parus Katia. You must choose what you see. Words is a battle of destiny. Please understand what I'm telling you. It's a battle of destiny. Words are like drugs. The only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth. Once they enter your spirit, they can keep you poor. They can keep you less anointed. 
but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender be what you are. This is the place where my flesh gives way. Do to me what you are. This is the place where my life is changed. Do to me what you are. The disciples went into hiding because of something they heard. As soon as Jesus resurrected, he told Mary Magdalene, he said, run, go and tell them this new information. Jesus is alive, he's risen, the tomb is empty. As soon as she went to tell them, that information gave them energy. Listen, you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else i am able i am well able i am well able 12 spies were sent 10 of them came with something called an evil report the bible did not call it an honest report it called it an evil it was their perception they brought and the bible says i don't care if it's not the word of god it's an evil report and joshua and caleb said let's go up at once he said we are well able they were the only two that entered the promised land listen listen you must make it a project to frustrate satan in your life you must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head but the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry, it's only the starting point and let me tell you this if you can hold on to that victory the bible calls the fight to protect god's information the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes overcomes lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes in the name of Jesus the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, Matosho Prekete, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight. Eba la bashe na da baya. Eba la da bas 
change from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven. Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are as it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No Every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information.
Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way. But the Bible says, every tree that has not been planted by my father, in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind, you are going to uproot and tear down by faith. Lift your voice and declare, I uproot. Every speaking, I uproot. Every foundation, I uproot. Every perception, I uproot. Every communication that is not consistent with the character. Every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my dreams. I call against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. Please look up while still praying. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee tense poverty, for it is written. Get thee tense limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. Speak scripture. It is written. So 
Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us we are praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10, Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And your pruning forks into spares this is not just a time for harvest it's a time for warfare and then he says in that warfare let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich let the redeemed of the lord say so you are about to say so now this is strategy everything the bible says you are Everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin. It must be as said. Rest of Patata, Rest of Patata, Rest of Patata, 
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We we'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven. He shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers. In famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men, Lord, arise by the Spirit. And let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Shake it, shake it, shake 
every Egyptian of the sea, every zone, the beast of the sea, and 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 the beast of the sea
the real activator of the possibilities of God is his divine power. His divine power flows through the channel of faith. But the final mystery that works the wonders is his divine power. The Bible says, according as his divine power that hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Tonight gathered here are several people with conditions that only God knows and only God can tell. But one thing I can tell you is that the king of glory is in this place. And not only the king of glory is in this place, the vessels that he has so engraced are also in this place. It is not a popular revelation in the church. Every time people say God is here, they are right. But the presence of the vessels that will be used by that God is often trivialized. Men are very powerful and they are very important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, burdens will fall. Tonight, yokes will be destroyed. Tonight, God will turn the lives of people around. Hear me. There are things that have no business happening in your life that will be made to happen. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Please understand this. Creation did not stop. There is nowhere in the Bible that God stopped creating. Mm -mm. Creation, God only took a break. But creation continues. Not just plants and animals. To create means to make material, to create a scenario out of nothing. You have no business getting a job before the year runs. But the word can create. You have no business coming out of pain. You have no business. But the word, the Rima word, revealed, backed by the power of God. You have no business being healed today. But the Bible says to appoint unto them that morning in Zion. To appoint means to set the date when it happens. Not only to reveal that it will happen, to make it happen. Hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please hear me. Shake away unbelief from your mind as we begin to pray. Don't let the, the devil will use the flesh. This is not the first time you are attending a miracle service, he will tell you. This is not the first time men of God are praying for you. The moment those things come, you have the responsibility of fortifying your mind. You refuse, reject it. You can insist by faith that tonight is my night. You can insist by faith. Father, the grace that has not come upon my life before tonight is the night it will come. Lord, the dimension that have not been opened to yet, this is the night I will receive. Hear me. Hear me. There are no special days for anybody. It is your faith that makes it special. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, any day can be that today. Mm. Are we together? Blind Bartimaeus is at the way towards Jericho. And Jesus will be passing for the last time. And the guy would have said one day he will come back again. And he would have missed it. The Bible says he cried. He cried, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus looks at him and with what you would think is sarcasm, he said, what should I do for you? And then he says to regain my sight. And that man regained his sight. Only people who insist with understanding receive anything. Hoping and wishing that God will touch me is a waste of time. We'll share the grace and you'll go back frustrated. But there are people who have come. Some of you have been fasting. Some of you traveled from outside of this nation with in this nation with hunger there are people standing outside people following online why will you allow the service finish and you just go back like that you are a man of God you have come from far why don't you carry something of substance that you can go back with as a witness that you met with the power of God is God speaking to us one scripture and then we'll pray 
Isaiah 61. This is a scripture that is very powerful. The hand of God is moving in overflow one. I continue to see this thing. Overflow one. I'm seeing it's an impartation. It's not just a deliverance. There is a pouring of graces that is coming on specific people. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had ordained. The word anointed there is ordained. Ordained me to preach good tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. All, not some. Three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, giving them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness it says that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified go to verse 4 and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations I believe in the power of God I believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost I believe in the limitless dimension of what the Spirit of God can do upon it how shall these things be Mary said seeing that I know not a man he says the power of the highest shall overshadow not come upon overshadow you are under the influence of the spirit of god and under the influence of the holy spirit there is nothing that cannot happen please listen to me under the influence of the spirit time can be compressed under the influence of the holy spirit there are things that should not happen but can happen now the lord is that spirit the bible says this lord we have been talking about is that spirit not just the father seated on the throne the lord who delivered the righteous the lord who anoints is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is you will know that he is there by the miracles you know that he's there not just because you ask him to come alone you are he Working miracles, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, way make miracle walk, promise keep light in the darkness, that is who you are, way make a miracle walk, is in a place not just because you believe by faith but there are tokens there are representations that attest to and validate the fact that he's in the midst of his people listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters tonight you are in for an encounter 
you are in for an experience it's a shift in the spirit and i want you to believe we are immersed in an atmosphere of limited possibilities limitless possibilities do not allow the devil to lie to you that your case is so great that god cannot meet you that god cannot touch you let god be true and let every man be a liar hallelujah now but listen i learned this from pastor benny Hinn. i will share this briefly and then we'll begin to pray having worked in the healing ministry for more than half of a century benny Hinn shared that one of the challenges he had observed with people when the power of god begins to move is they are not ready to release the pain the sickness the infirmity you will think just because you are in god's presence and you expect him to touch you to heal you he will not take something from you that you are still holding back this mystery was demonstrated in the woman with the alabaster box when she came to jesus the bible says it was made of spikenard pure nard a year's wages she broke it at his feet and it became an instrument of worship there are people who come with medical reports they come with pain they are just coming to inform god that this is what they are going through they are not ready for the exchange yet listen this is a very simple but powerful spiritual key when you come to god the bible says the instruction is to believe that he exists number two that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him how does he reward there must always be an exchange your weakness for his strength the miracle the testimony are we together now so you must be able to hand over everything here's how the bible puts it all my cares and burdens unto you I that's a part of the song that is powerful lord i come to you with this array of family challenges i'm handing it over to you i don't expect to go empty there are many people whether god touches you or not you will go back full because you didn't give him anything until you transfer the burden the sickness the bible says cast all your cares it didn't say god will do it it is your responsibility to say lord i'm tired of carrying this infirmity i'm tired of carrying this evil report i bring it before you and i cast it down when you are now empty god says i now exchange that which you have brought for what i have brought nobody comes before god empty and god does not come before any man empty the problem is there must be willingness for the exchange god will not rest upon you when your hands are full when your mind is full listen it is very important you are a man of god here if all you come to give god is frustration of ministry lord the church is not growing lord this and that that's that mm -mm, that's not the issue lord i hand over everything so it's time to carry your bills that is killing you and surrender it before him it, listen it's time to take the sickness it's time to take the, all the concerns don't take some and leave some carry everything ah. i cast my crown before the highest King of King 
kings and lords. When your hands are too heavy, you cannot receive anything. You will need to take away, bring the report from your office. Bring the report from a doctor. Bring everything. When you lay it at his feet, you now lift your hand ready to receive the healing, the miracle. You don't come before God just to inform him. No. God is not interested in just being aware. He's interested in doing something. Cast your care. Listen. Coming to God and releasing everything is proof of faith. That you come before him and say, Lord, if you do not help me, I don't know where the house rent is coming from. We are 11 in this family and it's clear that there is a yoke upon this family. You may think, listen, you may think because you are always appearing before him, it means you are casting your care. No. You have to intentionally, consciously say, Lord, I don't want this sickness again. Take it. I'm tired of this life of poverty and failure. I'm tired of this life without results. Are we together now? Yes. And one of the ways that we cast our care is through worship. Another way that we cast our care is through prayer. Very powerful. You can pray and say, Lord, take everything. Take everything. Tired of the burden of ministry. Tired of the burden of my family. This is not how you designed me to work. Take it. And then when you are now empty, remember when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Are we together tonight? It does not take God anything to lift you. It does not take God anything to bless you. It does not take God anything to cause men to bless and honor and lift you. Listen. Benny Hinn said that many people come to his healing crusades and they are ever conscious of their sicknesses, conscious of their infirmity, and even when the power of God is flowing, the fortitude for reception is not there because they are busy meditating. The size of this problem, can God solve it? And God is wondering and saying, who told you, who, who educated you about me? Who told you about me? The Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Tonight, God is able to transform. Tonight, God is able to heal. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To transform and to heal. Apostle, you don't understand the gravity of my situation. That's why. It's your mind and your perception that is being enlarged by the power of darkness. When God comes, the Bible says the mountains skip. Skip. And he clears a way for you. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. I'll give us two prayer points before I begin to minister. And I want us to please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer is you are going to ask the Lord. Listen carefully. You are going to ask the Lord to do something to your faith tonight. I agree and I concur. 
that sometimes the prevailing challenges can be so great and so mighty you will sit down and begin to wonder in our finite minds how will God navigate this and bring and birth this miracle for me are we together now this is where the spirit of faith comes the faith of God it says this is the victory that overcomes even our faith you're going to pray Lord my faith is strong I believe you I believe you lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart tonight my faith is strong I believe that this is the night the night when you transform the night when you heal the night when you deliver the night when you turn my family around is someone pray this is the night of your power the night of your glory salatas this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and manifested his glory manifest your glory oh God father help my own belief I reject unbelief they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a way can God make a way you are in ministry pray tonight is a night when you expand when you receive you are in business pray career pray you are in ministry pray for your family pray release your faith hallelujah listen prayer point number two the bible says ye have not because ye ask not you have not because you ask not he said ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete ask and you will receive he didn't say give us any day give us this day our daily bread listen when you come to God it is not only important that you are aware of who he is but you must come to God stating specifically the way and the manner that you desire or the area that you trust him to step in and come through for you for every time Jesus would meet with a blind man a lame man he would ask them what do you want that you are lame does not mean you want to stand you must be able to verbalize your requests you must be able to communicate listen I know that many of you have written your prayer request but I want to give you the next two or three minutes alone with God open your mouth and state the things that you desire by faith to happen to you tonight lift your voice and pray someone is talking to the Lord communicate your expectation when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us it says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad then it says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith in your heart. Ha 
Shala Baruta Shala Bragada Baladabo Santa Lato Shala Gradida Baladaba Rekete Baladaba. Someone is praying, Lord, my ministry is about to catch fire. There is a dimension of grace that must land upon my life. There is an operation of the spirit that must rest upon me. Is someone praying? I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life is changed I will never be the same My life I will never be the same I've touched your grace I will never Please look up. It is not very difficult for a man's situation to change. God is not a magician. You will need to release your faith with understanding. You are before the God of all flesh, the doer, the walker of wonders. He is truly a miracle walker. Please believe in miracles. Believe in miracles. They are not a fabrication of human intelligence. No. No. God can work miracles. God does miracles. God delivers. God heals. God lifts. God transforms. God sets free. That's what his grace can do. Never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never stay the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never preach the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never sing the same. My life is changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the atmosphere of God's glory, listen. Don't wait until you are called by prophecy. Don't wait until you are prophesied upon. Let your heart be open to receive. Let your heart be opened to rise in the spirit. I want to pray now. Please listen. Listen to me. The power of God is very strong here. Let's work together now, guys. Deliverance, when kept within the boundaries of the word of God, is powerful. Listen. Because for many of us, let me tell you this, I submit to you. Listen, please don't inconvenience the guests. The space is all right. Just, just let them be, please. Listen, it's an interesting thing that many believers are unwilling to accept. That behind many tragedies are spirits. 
please understand this behind many operations listen when jesus was going to calm the storm every storm is made of two things wind and water you can see the water but you cannot see the wind every storm is made of wind and water there is no storm that is made of water alone jesus rebuked the water he rebuked the wind and the water was still there is no problem that is as a physical problem there are spirits back of it whether it is financial marital spiritual one of the biggest deceptions of darkness is to believe that your issue is just sociological or just marital no sir no sir there are spirits more spirits than men on the earth in one man there was a legion in one man that's to tell you how much scarce bodies are on earth for these spirits six thousand spirits in one man please listen to what i tell you your financial situation can be masquerading itself and dribbling you all around and it, yes there are principles here and there but hear me you are not free until the spirit that sponsor the operation is dealt with are we together there are you can only judge situations by what has affected you the one that has not affected you yet is there but just because it has not happened yet you may not know so the secret is to address the spirits behind it and not wait for them to create different scenarios that show you they are there are we together when we pray and minister to people listen we're, we're a very we're a very balanced bible-based ministry and let me tell you this by the spirit of god you do not help men when you leave the spirits that is back of their situations to go back with them now i know that here and there people abuse these things and do all kinds of nonsense that are not within the jurisdiction of scripture this is not what we are talking about we are talking of liberty that is provable that you can walk out before the service is done you are seeing the evidence that this is what has masqueraded itself you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched his grace You can be a man of God here greatly ministry you are anointed but things may not be working and you may just think the issue is just ministry ethics preaching well that is wonderful but let me tell you he said I desire once and again to come to you but Satan hindered us it is not only angels that are on assignment there are spirits on assignment there are demons on assignment there are powers that are on assignment Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 what seest thou four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Jerusalem and against Israel that these horns have made it that no man doth lift his head he said but I have sent four carpenters it's a reality behind many families are spirits behind many medical reports are spirits behind many repeated patterns of frustration are spirits oh, oh, oh.
I shared the testimony of a gentleman many years ago. He was in ministry and um, I had the opportunity to counsel him. And while I was talking with him, as he entered my room, I saw a spirit just entering with him. And I looked at this dear gentleman, lovely, adorable, wonderful person. And I was politely going to hint him to say, sir, the Lord is already showing me what is behind your problem. And ah, the gentleman just shot me down and said, no, no, no. Don't talk to me about this and that. I said, that's all right. No problem. I respect you. I do this. Let me just pray with you. That's all I requested from him. The last thing he could remember was me beginning to pray. And then when he recovered from himself, like almost an hour later on, he got up. And for the next three days, this gentleman kept reaching me and said, Apostle, you have rattled my theology. What is this? Doors began to open like a charm in that gentleman's life. Listen, I hope you know that there was a relationship between the doors that were closed and the chains in the hand of Paul and Silas. It's very strange. They were bound hand and feet, the Bible says, at midnight. They lifted up their voices. They prayed and they sang. Suddenly, there was an earthquake because God himself came. And then, listen, the Bible says the moment there was that earthquake, the chains by themselves fell. Immediately, the chains fell. He said, all doors open, not some. All doors. There was no use of key. The key was that chain. As the chain fell, the doors opened. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, if there is any spirit entity that is back of my situation, it must live by the spirit and the grace of God. Lift your voice and pray. By the power of the Holy Ghost, tonight in the name of Jesus, every spirit that is not of the Christ, that is back of the situation around my life, my family, my business, my ministry. Pray. Hallelujah. You see, the power of God is already touching people. Listen, I'm going to take a few minutes tonight to really address this issue of spirits because they are real. They are very, very real. Very real. Hallelujah. I have met so many spirits in my life. I've had so many encounters. That's not the basis of believing they are there. Scripture already tells us they are there. But let me tell you, they are there. And they are not there doing nothing. They are there causing pain. They are there manipulating families. They are there projecting things that are not of the Christ. But the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let's pray. I want to begin to pray now. Please listen. Whether or not you are an usher, I'd like you to help those under the anointing. We're going to do a lot of praying this night while I'm ministering. Um, please participate in the prayer. Prayer is very powerful when done with understanding. Are we together? Now I want to pray for you and then begin to minister to people. Because there are real spirits behind people's situations. Hallelujah. First, I want you to bring out now. I'm not going to say anything. God is giving me an instruction. The power of God, I'm already seeing something like a blue smoke rising out of people. And these are spirits. And when that happens, the power of God will come upon them. I want you, whether outside or inside, just begin to bring them out here. We're going to pray and call on that name now. But the Lord is revealing to me. You will be very surprised. Some of you are standing for yourself, standing for your family. Please bring them out. This is the instruction God is giving. 
except God is not God. There is no spirit that is back of any one situation that will remain after tonight. Please quickly just bring them out. I'm seeing the power of God. I don't know why God is giving me this instruction. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Please bring them out. Let's just walk with what the Holy Ghost is doing. The strangers that must come out of their hiding place and let you be and let your family be. Harus Kabarata. There's fire burning in this place. One more minute and then we'll pray. God is still locating people inside and outside. It's time for your liberty and your liberty in full, in full by the Spirit. Establishing the victory of the Christ over every life, every destiny. All right, we're ready to pray. Please lift your hands. Let me pray now. I'm seeing fire. That fire is coming on people as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As you shout that name, Jesus, I declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that every legal access upon which the devil is laying claim over lives, over bodies, over finances, over destinies, I invoke help that woman by the blood of the eternal covenant. It must go now at the count of three. Shout Jesus. One, two, three. I cause darkness by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command the powers that be by the blood of the eternal covenant that everything that binds men to spirits binds men to realities in the spirit. I come against it by the God of Jeshurun. Please bring them out. We release a sound in the realm of the spirit. We declare sounds of victory. Was you praying, my God? Chains. I'm seeing chains in the spirit. One more time, you are going to shout that name. Lord, if there is anyone here under any kind of chain, the Bible says to release them that are bound. As you shout that name, no matter how long that chain has stayed, it's time for you to be released. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, for the honor of your word. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break those chains now. Now, I break those chains now over families, over businesses. I break those chains now. Separacatobadash, Embrekete Catabaratusia. Hallelujah. 
the Lord is showing me the vision of a graveyard I'm seeing the vision of a graveyard and the Lord wants me to rebuke the spirit of the grave the spirit of Hades I stand by the God of heaven and I declare right now anyone covenanted to the power of the grave the covenant with death the covenant with the grave by fire may that fire fall on you now the covenant with the grave the covenant with death I speak by the anointing of the Holy Ghost be free now be liberated now be free now Hallelujah. Now listen, we are going to pray for the sick, but I'm sensing a unique grace for the healing of growths and lungs. Growths and lungs. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like a woman on a surgical table. This is what I'm seeing. I'm speaking right now. Every spirit behind the infirmity. My God, I'm seeing fire fall on people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Every lump, every growth fibroids, malignant growth, cancerous tissues. By the spirit of the living God. Let the life and the power of God touch you now. Let the life, help them please. Let the life and the power of God in the name of Jesus, I command those crows to leave those bodies now. I command them to dissolve now. Help that lady, please. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Growths. I'm still seeing growths coming out of people's bodies. Swellings of all kinds. This is not limited to women alone. Including men. Be free now in the name of Jesus. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more Everyone here in front. In this overflow and all the overflows, I declare that the spirits that lay claim upon any aspect of your life, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I command them to leave now. Pack your load and go at the count of three. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out of their destinies now. Out of their lives forever. Out of their lives forever. Out of their homes forever. Out of their bodies forever. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. We are still praying. Now, the Lord is showing me something that I don't see very often. I'm seeing an old gate and I'm seeing chains on it with a padlock. This is a sign of stagnation. You are here and mysteriously, you have been in the same position. You try to move, you try to push. I'm about to smash that gate to pieces. Not to open it, to stamp it down. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Now help them please. Listen. I want you to shout Jesus from the depth of your heart. I decree and declare every destiny here that has been tied down by men, by systems, by spirits, so that you cannot move. By this shout of Tequila tonight, I declare every gate crushed and comes down now. Are you ready? At the count of three. One, two, three. I prophesy to you, move forward, go forward, go forward.
forward, go forward. Stagnation comes to an end. Retro apakoto shala rekete kete kete parus kaba embregeto sheleto sabaka. Stagnation comes to an end. Retrogression comes to an end. Hallelujah. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing the name Bukola. Bukola. Our time is gone. There is still a lot to do. Who is Bukola? Don't worry. Don't force and rush those who are standing in front. You're Bukola. Where are you coming from? Let me pray for you, my dear. Stand up and I'll pray for you. You are also Bukola. My dear, hold my hands. Listen, in the name of Jesus, this shade that I'm seeing be loose now. In the name of Jesus, I lose you from that chain. It is broken now and broken forever. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is showing me someone you walk in first bank. You walk in first bank. Who is that person? You need a serious miracle now. You walk in first bank. First bank. Let's hurry up, please. You walk. Who is that first bank? All of you are Bukola. Ma, let me speak to you. The grace for wealth. Stand up. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing currencies falling on you. And the Lord is telling me that there is a strange grace for wealth. This, this, is, this should be Kingsley's wife. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the spirit of the Lord, let that word come to pass now. I release you by the power of prophecy into that dimension. Prepared blessings by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll pray for everyone, but the power of God is going to come on one of you now. Very mighty anointing is coming on one of you, and God is setting that person's family free. One of these Bukolas, right? So the power of God is coming on you, one of you. It, this is not something small. It's a, a mighty outpouring of the power of God. When that happens, um, I would just identify that one. Who works in First Bank? First Bank, you are a staff. Huh? No, you are not a staff of First Bank. You are on contract. Is that true? You are on contract. I will still pray. This person I'm seeing is a bona fide staff of the bank. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing something that can cost you your job. Father, show this, my dear brother, mercy by the grace of God. Look at me, sir. I'm seeing a whirlwind on your head. I need to pray against confusion and pray against stagnation. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are set free now and you are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please make sure you are observing the ladies. The power of God is going to come on one. That's the instruction God is giving me. It's very mighty anointing. When it comes on that one, I want to pray for them. Your father is a general in the army. Who is that? Your dad is a general in the army. I need to pray. We need to rebuke conspiracies. The Lord is showing me your father is a general in the army. Real army, military. Please, if you are that person, I want you to come. If you are that person, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. This is conspiracy. In the name of Jesus, over her family, let there be a mighty deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you for the various reasons why you have come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord himself give you testimonies. Very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. There's no marriage. One, two, three, four, five. Five ladies. Nobody has settled down. Where are you? Please come. Where are you coming from, my dear? From Joss. 
I want to pray. You are five of you, all alive, five ladies. No one has settled down. What do you do? Contract staff with Sterling Bank. Wait. Sterling Bank. Sterling Bank. Yes. You will leave the bank soon. Amen. Listen to me. There is another job that is coming for you. When that job comes, don't fight it. It's the will of God. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should go and retire now. But I'm telling you that another job is coming. Let's pray. It's not normal. We need to break this. I'm seeing three ladies in my vision. I don't know why there's only one person here. These five, five families. Please make sure you don't tell lies. Don't just come and stand here. If it's not, I will pray for everybody. Five families. No, not one person has settled down. Ladies now. Don't cry, my dear. Jesus is in this place. Release the family now. Release the family now. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing coals of fire and I'm seeing a horn on it. Release the family now. There is someone here. This is a very mysterious thing that happens to you. In a very strange way. This happens especially when you pray for extended periods. Your whole body starts itching you in a funny way. You know how someone under the influence of a, what they call that drug? Chloroquine. That's what happens to you. Like physically you begin to scratch your body. I must pray for you. Why is she here? Please. You are the one? Come. Come. Madam, you too. Where are you coming from, ma? You are coming from Abuja. Come. We will attend to the photos you are holding here, eh? but for now, we need to pray for you. This is, this is not just evil, very evil. I have to pray for you. You too, my brother. Where are you coming from? God. You see, my dear people, I'm, no, I'm not saying if your body is itch, listen to the, the, the issue. I just saw fire, this row, right down. Just like a sword of fire just passed. I don't know who that is for, but in the name of Jesus, let it bring emancipation right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. You believe in Jesus? I bring you life from this kingdom that we represent. Be free now from this demonic, satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus. Our dear auntie, let me pray for you. Just keep her there. Can you hold my hands, madam? I want to pray for you right now in the name that is above all names. Help her. Be free right now. I curse the workings of darkness over your body and over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Five families, hold my hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, let it be over. Let the doors be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you, my dear. I'm looking at you physically, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing an arrow inside your head. I need to pray. There is infirmity that has been projected in your body. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Can I pray for you? Is that all right? Father, help this lady. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, be free from this that does not name the name of Christ. I set you free from it now in the name of Jesus. Five ladies, I'll just lay my hands on you. Be free right now. Let the doors be opened. Be free right now. Kai, let her go. Out now in the name of Jesus. She's also here. Your dad is a general in the army. Where are you from? Uh, Gombe State. 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 You are in Abuja, but you are from Gombe State. I'd like us to pray. Can I pray for you? I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? Don't be afraid. Look at me. Those who plan evil, in the name of Jesus, they will not live to execute their wickedness. You see, Ba, my brothers and my sisters, let me teach you something about life. The Bible says a man's enemy shall be the members of his own household. Father, 
preserve the life of this our general in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there is a family now God is breaking the plague of death the power of God is coming I don't know whether they are inside or outside the plague of death is being broken right now there is a mighty anointing that is coming on that wise to set them free from the plague of death please come very quickly I'll just touch you I don't know why they are here but we have to hurry up very quickly just a touch believe by faith it is over out of her now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus sir where are you coming from I'm from Abuja from Abuja yeah what do you do sir I'm a minister you are a minister of the gospel I want to pray for you where, where, where are you coming from where do you come your state of origin do you plan to go this Christmas no, I'm not but I'm not huh? I'm, I, I went for operation it's not to... listen that's what I want to talk to you I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing you were supposed to have died it's because of the intercession of men that you are alive but then I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom we anything God shows we cancel you get the point now I'm seeing this man going in a bus and I'm seeing a truck I will not mention I'm not being antagonistic but the truck did not just shift your car it climbed it and everybody gone like that you see when God shows a thing it is because of the strength he has put in his church the power to change it completely are we together I want to pray for you you are very sick and even the surgery has not solved the problem because what I'm seeing is still there please hold my hand sir father in the name of Jesus Christ the son let this man not be given to the sword let him not be given to the grave in the name of Jesus I knock on the door of life and I speak to you sir by the power of the Holy Ghost be set free I fortify you by the power of God's word and I declare death will be far from your dwelling I speak that your going out is blessed and safe even your coming in is blessed and it is safe in the name of Jesus may the Lord show you mercy continually in Jesus name I pray family of five I need to pray hold my hands Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh yeah. Oh yeah yeah say oh yeah In the name of Jesus I lose you and your siblings everything that is an orchestration of darkness I speak by the Spirit of the Living God you are loose now in the name of Jesus I declare liberty I restore dignity and honor what is happening to you I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going down here there's somebody the same thing is happening to someone there the same thing God is doing here God is doing to a lady there I declare be liberated right now in the name of Jesus please come sir let me just touch you by faith in Jesus name be set free come in Jesus name be set free 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 there is someone I think you are in ministry you are in overflow one the power of God is going to come upon you in a mighty way now please carry the person and bring the person here we have to hurry up I'm seeing the power of God touch the person hallelujah I'm about to release that grace for speed again Please come. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Shala super I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing blood dripping around the east. And the Lord is saying, those who are easterners, 
is this is a, this is a sign and a wonder when god shows me a map whenever i mention that location anyone who is oppressed within that location the power of god comes on them right now i'm seeing the east the east i release that power now the Lord is bringing liberation, eastern states. I'm seeing blood drip upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing an elderly woman with sharp pain around her lumbar vertebra. The power of God is touching that woman right now. Who is the person? Mommy, you're welcome. One to pray. Ah. Not everything that looks like sickness is sickness. There are many things that are projections of darkness. Are we together? Mommy, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Help her, please. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, release our mother in the name of Jesus. Mommy, I command that infirmity, that plague and that yoke of darkness be gone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just pray for these two people now. This lady, where is she coming from? Okay. There is, it will surprise you how the grace for intercession will come on you. This lady, this fair lady, I'm talking to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. May that grace mantle you and turn you into a sign and a wonder. The Lord will show you things in your dreams. He will show you things in visions. Please bring our mommy for me. Let me pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, um, just touch her back for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now, this is not sickness. This is the spirit of death. I command the spirit of death, hell, and the grave to leave our mother right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Complete emancipation. Complete emancipation. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands just here. I don't know why, but this is what he's saying. Just right here to the wall. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people's stomach, the abdominal region. I'm seeing things like chains. Just bring those under the anointing as I'm talking. I'm seeing things like chains. These are devils of infirmity. The Lord is asking me to just stretch my hand. Please just allow me do my madness with God here and let the Lord set these people free. Please bring them out. We're hurrying up now in the name of Jesus. Karu salatu ziata. Kariza hashalam barita suba haseketa. Kradu saleto shala saba hasharata ziakata. Rakata barada balakata prata sadabakato shala branda skabariata. I place my hand on my stomach as a point of contact. Every planting that is not of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, be free from it now. Yeah. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on one of the ushering ladies. One of these ladies with the jerseys. I'm seeing an anointing. I know you are ministering, but this is a miracle God is bringing for you, for your family. One of the ushering ladies. I don't know whether they are inside, outside. I'm seeing an anointing on one of the ushering ladies. This is, this is liberty that God is bringing right now. Shalus Karita Hasubadia. In the name of Jesus, my dear, look at me. 
shame and reproach is living your life now shame and reproach is living your life now the garment of shame and reproach is living your life now why is this gentleman here you are not the anointing outside come hold my hands in the name of Jesus I pray for you come you lifting your hands run come your time of change has come where are you coming from it's, it's all right it's okay don't worry that's why you are here do you know me that's why I'm saying you just relax you were in the crowd and God brought you here do you know why God brought you here because things are not working at all in your family God needs to turn things around if I don't pray for you what I'm seeing is you are celebrating Christmas morning and blaming people being the reason why somebody died and another person died because I'm seeing the spirit of death hovering around your family but the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit let me pray for you hold my hands my dear what did you study Do you have a job? I'm, I'm a copper in Ondo State. I'm, work, I'm, I'm a copper. I'm serving an NGO mm. for HIV in Ondo State. I want to pray for you. The favor of God that will come upon you from this miracle service will surprise you. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I stay the power of evil over your family. And in the name of Jesus, I release you to a realm and a dimension of strange favor. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but I want to release this grace for speed. Please, I want you to believe there is a real grace for speed. If you don't have it, you don't have it, period. There is a grace. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana, Kashina. Turkin Sarakuna Yanana Turkin Sarakuna Let's pray. Listen. It's a mystery how God brought me into this understanding. When you understand how speed works, you will never feel bad for any delay in your life. It's a strange system that insists that you catch pace with destiny. It works mysteriously. It works by compressing time. 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 Dominion over time is what speed is about. I want to pray for someone now. Sirkin Sarakuna. Father, please, I know that when I begin to pray inside and outside, people will begin to run physically. Honestly, why God does it, I don't know. I think it's just a prophetic acting of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. But every time I pray this prayer, the hand of God comes upon people and you find out that sometimes they begin to run physically. And I'm going to pray that prayer now. There are people here, God wants to take 10 years and put in one year. God wants to take one year five years and put in one month is it not written in your bible that i will restore the years god does not only restore things he restores time whoever can restore time must be god himself are we together in the name of jesus i decree and declare right now everyone under the sound of my voice inside outside parushalata i declare at the count of three father let this grace for speed restoration the mystery that gains time may that grace fall upon people within this auditorium overflow one two three four online in the name of jesus receive that grace one two three take that grace now 
take that grace. Speed. Restoration. I prophesy. Pursue. Overtake. Without fail, recover. Pursue. Overtake. Without fail, recover. In career, pursue. In marriage, pursue. In ministry, pursue. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Pursue. Overtake. Recover. Pursue. Help that woman, please. Overtake. Recover. Financially, pursue. Overtake. Recover. In your influence, pursue. Overtake. Recover. In your academics, I pray for students. Pursue. Overtake. Recover. Pursue. Overtake. Recover. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The person who will run out now under the anointing, don't stop the person, just hold the person. By the person's self, mysteriously by the Spirit, there is a prophetic word, and this is how God told me, it's a force that will come upon the person. Please help her. Nah, nah, nah. It will happen by the spirit. They will come out by themselves. A strong anointing is not something you can resist. This is a sign and a wonder. How God does it, I don't know. Sarkin Sarakuna. There are three more people. That's why I'm standing. Three more people. It's a wind. It's a force of the spirit. The wonder walking power of Jesus. How the church has limited him, limited him, limited him. Please help them, make sure they don't injure themselves. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana, Kashina, Kamuna. I speak to all these ones that have come out by the Spirit. I'm declaring right now the chains that hold your feet. I'm seeing their legs specifically, their legs with chains. I lose you now. In the name of Jesus, I release you to destiny. I release you to destiny. I release you to destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost. No more delay, no more retrogression by the Spirit of the Living God. The force of God's power birthing possibilities in the lives of people. The power of God is coming on this gentleman, this one wearing polo. Yes, 
my friend the anointing of the spirit is coming on you in a very mighty way and I'm seeing a gate open before you and night is at your back and day is in your front I prophesy to you what I'm seeing and to everyone who connects with this prophecy I take night behind you and I command your morning to stand before you I take night behind you and I command the sun to shine before you in the name of Jesus Christ everyone lift your voice say after me in the name of Jesus please shout it say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the anointing of the spirit I am breaking limits I am moving forward lift your voice and begin to prophesy breaking limits in the name of Jesus I make progress is someone praying I make progress by the power of the Holy Ghost breaking limits breaking limits Hallelujah. We're about to pray for the sick now. Please listen. When we take our time to pray for the sick like this, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on someone just around the ministers. As I came here, I just spoke. I just saw fire just resting. Strong anointing from the front to my back. Strong anointing. The Spirit of God is resting upon people. Moving, shifting by the Spirit of the living God. How forcible. Pastor, there is a grace coming on you. The HICC pastor, a strong anointing, shifting you by the spirit. Step into a new dimension. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King of Jana, Na Na Na. New dimensions. We want to pray for the sick now. Listen very carefully. I believe in miracles. There are people here who are standing, trusting God to touch various aspects of their lives, their bodies. Kai, there is still a strong anointing around the minister section here. I'm seeing impartations, real graces, impartations coming by the Spirit. Impartations. People are drinking of wines. Ima, lift your hands. I amplify the prophetic upon your life in the name of Jesus. I amplify the prophetic in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands, two of you. Please help them. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Amplify the grace. You step into new dimensions in the spirit. The spirit and the power of the word. Your words from today will be like fire. Fire. Refine us fire. Sarukin Sarabuna. Dan, come. Hold my hands. Grace is given for you to rise. No more delay. I place a ladder before you and I shift you by the spirit to the amazement of many. May your life change. Change like day and night. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise. Let's stretch our hands here. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Prophecy, no matter how accurate, is limited by time and the openness of the vessel. 
but that every time this is not a ritual it's a revelation to come before the god who can answer listen there are things here written that are death sentences there are things written here that will take only god to provide a miracle for there are things written here that are age-long captivities some of them even predate our coming to the earth but there is a name that is above every other name the bible says wherefore god hath so highly exalted him and given him an office a name a title the bible says that at the mention of that name everything in the earth in heaven under the earth will bow every knee and then every tongue will confess that jesus is lord even to the glory of the father I cannot begin to tell you the kind of tearsome testimonies that have come out of this this is not a ritual there is a covenant that sponsors the, uh, the answered prayer here and one more time and the last time really for this year I want us to agree in the next two three minutes wherever you are just stretch your hands as a point of contact and begin to pray that the Egyptian that I see today in the name of jesus the christ of god i will see them no more forever is someone praying every evil report orchestrations of darkness if it had a beginning tonight is the end pray don't worry for those of you at the overflow who are still being ministered to just focus as the ministers minister to you while we pray Jesus we decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever <laughs> father we bring before you every situation here marital situations financial situations spiritual situations career situations in the name of Jesus we bring them under the covering of the blood every legal access upon which these requests continue to remain by the blood of the eternal covenant we nullify that access now in jesus name <laughs> father by this prayer we blot out handwritings and ordinances that speak against god's people we declare them nullified forever I stand as one sent by the Spirit of the Lord and I declare receive strange testimonies 
before this year runs out in the name of Jesus let every request tabled here be turned into testimonies testimonies are largely answered through men when it leaves heaven most times the testimonies we need we need them in their material form there are few testimonies that we need them just in the spirit form i'm praying every human agent that must partner with god partner with the systems of god to see to it that this request is granted we compel them by the spirit to do so now in the name of jesus every death sentence written here in the name of jesus we cancel it now yes. hallelujah let it be done so shall it be we establish it in the name of jesus now we want to round up by prophesying over our lives this for me you've heard me say this is the best part of the service because this is where everybody gets an opportunity for spiritual realities to be created in your life. Please, I want you to agree with me. Every proclamation that will come, receive it by faith. Believe it and shout a loud amen as proof that you believe it. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Everything representing shame and reproach in your life and that of your family. Karus Kabarada Shilatadia. It comes to end this night in the name of Jesus. pray for your spiritual life the kind of encounter that you have not had from January till now strange encounters revelations of heaven receive that grace in the name of Jesus and if our God is for us then you could ever stop us and if our God is with us then And if our God is with us, every wall that stands before you and the next dimension, I decree and declare by the spirit of grace that was upon the nation of Israel standing before Jericho, I command every wall, go down flat. Financial walls go down flat. Career walls go down flat. In the name of Jesus. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Every man that must send for you to come out from where you are to where you need to go to, the gatekeepers of the dimensions that you seek to enter, I compel favor from them to you. I compel favor from them to you. In the name of Jesus. There are angels that herald the influence of a man. Listen, honor is a grace. When that grace is not upon you, no matter how noble you are, you will never be honored. Honor is a grace. And when that grace is on you, only God can take it away. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his, not more prosperous not more favored more honorable many people do not know what honor is 
the fortitude for preference. There is an unction from God that fishes you out of the crowd, places you in a position where the eyes of men must discern you, reward you, recognize that which God has invested within you. Listen to me. There are many gifted people. The eye that can bless has not seen you. There are many men of God. The eyes that can discern and lift you is not there. Let me pray for you. There is a grace for honor. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may the mantle that makes for honor, territorial honor, honor at a national level, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. You will be surprised to see the workings of this grace in your life. When the grace for honor and favor is upon you, you will always be found in the midst of your destiny helpers. Listen, it's a mystery that cannot be explained. You will be suspended until they appear. Then you come. Listen. Is a waste to fight battles without reward. David said, what shall be given to the man that will do this to Goliath? Sometimes it's a waste to do noble things in the face and the presence of people who have no fortitude to discern and to reward. I pray for you. May the Lord position your destiny help us and cause them to love you and to honor you. The Lord asked me to wear this as a prophetic representation of what he is still doing. It is still a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. Have the faith to believe. Don't sit down questioning. Leave your mind and trust God. It is within his power to make great. He takes a man from the dunghill overnight and turns his life around. I'm praying for you. For some of you, before this year is over, step into a dimension of prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared parushalata. I release you into a dimension of prepared blessing. Listen, believers, I want you to believe this. Our time is gone, but I want you to believe this. Do not doubt what the power of God can do. Hallelujah. We're rounding up in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The grace that will produce results of wonders in your life. May that grace rest upon you now. Prepared blessings that take you to realms. Ten years put in one month. I release that grace upon you. These graces are not some carnal show of wealth. No. They are time redemption systems. Understand what they are. They seek to conquer time and give you the convenience and the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the grace for ease that brings you into supernatural results. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family represented here. The sound of mourning. The sound of pain and anguish by the spirit of the living God. Let it come to an end this night. Everything 
that has refused to walk in your life by the power of the highest I compel it to begin to walk now men you do not know may they carry glad tidings about you to the ears of your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the presence of God the weightiness the substance of his presence that must rest upon you especially if you are in ministry by the power of the Holy Ghost be a career of divine presence in the name of Jesus everyone here trusting God for a job before this year runs out may God give you a miracle job Every family here trusting the Lord for any and every kind of breakthrough we call upon the God of the heavens in the name of Jesus let there be an, a, an abundant supply of that grace hear me whoever ignores you will pay for it hear me any man that fights you goes down instantly let me say it again any man that fights you goes down instantly i pray for every ministry here under the sound of my voice the grace and the wings of the spirit that will take you to dimensions untold may that grace rest upon you I pray for every man and every woman of God here, the errands and the horse that will hold your hands, loyal men indeed, may God give them to you. Anyone here who the testimony over your life is Ichabod, I declare by the Spirit of God, a restoration happens now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the snare of the fowler, nor the noisome pestilence, nor the destruction that wasted in noonday. Says a thousand shall fall by your side, and ten thousand by your right side. It says none shall hurt you, but with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. I pray for you, as a bird is escaped from the snare of the fowler, may you escape from every evil may you escape from every trap in the name of jesus christ i speak over your life go from glory to glory the remaining weeks of this year i'm speaking to you may they be weeks of strange wonders and finally let me speak over your prayer life over your word study life whatever has stolen your joy whatever has stolen your fire whatever has stolen your passion whatever has stolen your focus in the name of Jesus by fire let it be restored tonight may the gifts of the Holy Ghost operate freely in your life may you be a wonder first to yourself and then may you be a wonder to everyone around you in the name of Jesus finally anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to see to it that you will not finish this year well to see to it that it will not be well with you and your family Gehazi came and met the woman and said it's all well it's all well with your household I pray for you because the Bible says to say to the righteous it shall be well therefore I speak over you it is well I declare over you all is well in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus for all of you who have traveled from far whether from another nation right down here from another city right down here you will go back with strange testimonies you will carry a fire and anointing that will be worth your coming here in the name of Jesus very quickly you are here under the sound of my voice please let's minimize movement and you are saying apostle I want you to give me an opportunity 
to give my life to Jesus Christ. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've seen the wonder-working power of God. I need Jesus as a matter of urgency in my life. Hear me. The Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Praise the Lord. Whether you are here inside or outside, there are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I need restoration of my relationship with Jesus. It is never too late to reconnect with him. Now, whether you are here, let's minimize movement, whether you are here inside or outside, we cannot close this meeting. This is the last miracle service for the year. Wherever you are, whether you are rededicating your life or you are handing your life over to Jesus for the first time, inside, outside, overflow, one, two, three, I want you to run and come and stand right in front of me here. Sustain the boldness to come. Don't be ashamed. Let's celebrate them as they come, Koinonia. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Keep coming. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. The Bible says, for God so loved you and me, he proved his love by giving, not taking giving his one and only begotten son now the firstborn of we the begotten that whosoever will believe in him should not perish is a law but have the way the life of god you have come many of you making this decision for the first time many of you rededicating your lives to jesus listen it doesn't matter why you came i want you to know that there is a god who loves you desperately unashamedly and is ready to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and say this very passionately say this truthfully from the depth of your heart say lord jesus please if you're joining us quickly come quickly come find a space and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart say with me again lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe join them quickly say i believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I reign in life I am a child of God I belong to the family of God amen keep your hands lifted while I pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit you are able to save to the uttermost scripture says thank you for drawing these ones I decree and declare by the spirit of God that every legal stand that the devil has against them is nullified tonight by the blood. I declare by the authority of scripture your sins be forgiven and I declare that the Lord grants you a new beginning from tonight. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. The power to love and serve Jesus is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly there are a number of you um, there are two gentlemen waving their hands. You can follow this aisle or this one, whichever will take you to the same place. Please follow them as we celebrate them. There will be a group of people to just receive you and just share a few things with you and you'll be back. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. 
share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.